Our business analyst, Matt Daneman, is off this week, so instead of the business segment, we have a special report to mark National Deaf Awareness Week. A new task force is looking at ways to recruit more deaf and hard of hearing students into health care fields. The University of Rochester and the National Technical Institute for the Deaf at Rochester Institute of Technology are part of that effort. WXXI's Carla Clear examines why the task force is needed. Meet Kyle and Sarah. They're two deaf and hard of hearing students studying to go into the healthcare profession. We need more deaf healthcare professionals. That, that is, the, there's communication difficulties for deaf patients when they do see their doctors, and there's no better form of communication than have a deaf doctor help them. I think I have some strengths that will contribute to me being a good nurse. I am sensitive and caring and I'm a quick thinker. In the top 25 selected majors by the ACT entrance exam, nearly half of the deaf and hard of hearing students who took the test pick careers in the healthcare field. So we know that the interest is there. Rosemarie Toscano is the co-chair of the task force and a professor at the National Technical Institute for the Deaf at RIT. But we are not yet seeing those numbers increase in the baccalaureate and in the four-year and professional programs, and that's really where the future is. Toscano says the task force is researching the number of deaf students interested in becoming nurses, doctors, pharmacists, surgeons, or veterinarians. She says that's to track where they end up on that career ladder. We started actually identifying groups of people that we want to interview and um, survey to learn more about the barriers and the solutions that they have encountered. Think about surgery, they wear those masks. I need a lip read and if, if they have those on, I, I have no idea what they're saying. Dr. Michael McKee says he understands Kyle's concern. With the, uh, the masks, what do you do, how do you handle that? And there, in that, that situation, I had an interpreter to help me uh, kind of get around that, that barrier. Right now, available, is um, they have like what's called what's called a clear mask. So for some people can actually you know, lip read some uh, through where before it was completely blocked. McKee has been practicing medicine for over 20 years. Come take a listen. He says the task force is aiming to make sure that the Kyles and Sarahs are given the same opportunities as their hearing peers. We have a lot of uh, really talented, uh, smart, um, you know, deaf and also hard of hearing students why they, they get these barriers and they get frustrated and they give up. At first I thought that going into the healthcare profession would be a barrier because it, it would be somewhat harder to communicate with other people. Taking blood pressure readings has been more difficult because I can't hear it through the stethoscope. So I take the systolic blood pressure by palpation, which is feeling the artery. I know that without, if I don't have the support I need in medical school, then I don't think I could be successful. Kyle says note takers and interpreters would help make med school easier. Toscano says the long term solution includes policy and legislative changes to ensure students get what they need. In the meantime, Sarah says You have to be patient with yourself um, and you have to try a lot of trial and error and really search for what works best for you. I'm going to listen to your lungs. Can you take a deep breath for me? I'm Carlette Clare for Need to Know Rochester. That task force will reconvene in November at NTID. I'm Julie Phillip, and you've been watching Need to Know Rochester. Next week, it's Arts Friday on 